Okay, guys. So now that I've unleashed the full potential of my i7 4700MQ, I found out quickly that uh, I'm constrained by the heating system, the cooling system, I mean, of the laptop, which you can see on this image. The left hand side is what I currently have. Now, these, the one on the right side is the one that comes with the um, discrete graphic. Um, chip and you can see it has a dual heat pipe system so you can see how quickly a single small heat pipe like this can get overwhelmed by a 47 watt tdp uh, i7 so what i did was go online and i quickly found this image which once i saw it couldn't get it out of my mind basically it's from the thinkpad forums and this is a t440p with a DIY mod and you can see here the second heat pipe beautifully done. I found an ad for a heat pipe and it was incredibly cheap. 500 Hungarian forints is around one and a half euro. So I found this for a Fujitsu Siemens laptop and it has a 90 degree, as you can see on the second image, it has a 90 degree turn. And this will be perfect for me because if you take a look at my heat pipe it's 90 degree almost a sharp 90 degree angle here so the plan is to get a second heat pipe so basically to disorder that heat pipe from the Fujitsu Siemens heat pipe that I'm, uh, I'll buy and attach it here in this space and if you look, if you compare, you will see that there is actually, when I uncovered this plastic piece, there is still contact with the fins of the radiator. So there will be space here to transfer heat to the metal section of the radiator from the heat pipe. And basically these parts were made to be interchangeable depending on the computer specifications. So the biggest job will be to first disorder this from this and knowing i reading online i found out that this is a small form of mini bomb because it's pressurized it's filled up with a gas which can expand and blow up so i have to be careful with disordering this and then insert it here so phase two will be to either solder or use thermal glue to glue this piece here and this should double the the heat soak material that is available now on the in this cooling system so when both pipes are now pumping the heat away to the fan we should be able to gain some headroom to go up to that uh, high three gigahertz or core speeds so this is what i'm finally hoping for so here it is i finally collected it and I actually bought two of these so I could work with one and uh, if I mess that up then I know the steps not to repeat on the second. So I'm going to have to find a way to disorder this shim that contacts the CPU and also this. So I'm probably going to have to remove this plastic part heat on both sides. But if I heat one side, it should transfer the heat inside and melt the solder here too if it's actually soldered. Well, only way to find out is to get the heat gun and go outside, try to protect ourselves and uh, try to heat this up and see if we can disorder it. So let's go. Now is the moment of truth. I'm going to try to disorder this heat sink from its shim, or the heat pipe, by the way. And uh, I'm going to use a temperature regulated uh, heat gun. As soon as the heat gun produces enough heat to melt solder, then I'm going to put it on there and let's see. Now this may be a bomb, so I'm going to hide behind this and hope nothing goes wrong. Okay guys, let's go. First I'm going to add some flux. This should help the solder dissolve if it's actually soldered on.
Oh, you see that? It fell off by itself. But here the solder just gets so hard. Done. <laughs> it's done guys. Okay, so now I'm just you can see it was soldered on to the shim that contacts the CPU. And it was soldered inside of the heatsink too. And as soon as I started warming up the heatsink, um, stuff just started falling off. Okay, so now I'm going to let this cool down and then I'm going to test it. Um, heat one end and see if the heat transfers to the other and um, that means that the heat sink the heat pipe is still working and we can continue on with the project okay okay guys we're back inside and uh, you can see here I believe that this swole up just a little bit became a little bit fatter and more rounder here with all the heat so you just have to be careful when you're doing this stuff because you may end up uh, exploding it if you if you spend too much time with it, just get in as hot as possible and try to get it disordered as fast as possible. Okay, so here now I have, I want to do a little experiment in which I'm going to test heating one part, touching the other and seeing if the heat actually transfers. Okay. So, this is my thermometer, thermocouple. Okay, just going to use a normal lighter. Yes, the temperature is going up. You saw that? It's coming back down. Okay, 54, 55 degrees C. What about this part? 52. 49. So you can see that heat is immediately moving along getting cooler here now that the heat source is gone and warmer here which will be the section the fan uh, exhausts the heat so let's try with the other one too first temperature here 30 30 just similar temperatures on both ends i'm going to start heating now with this lighter Touch here. Yep, it's going up fast. 42, 45, 47, 48, 50. Okay, let's just stop there. So let's quickly touch this section. 50, 53 degrees C. What of here? 48, 49. It didn't have time to heat up enough. On this side, 45, so immediately cooling down very quickly, while here, 45. Forty-five point six, and here, 46, 45. So it looks like we didn't destroy the heat pipes, very happy about that, so just Pay attention, obviously there are some kinks because I had to use uh, tools to grab onto the pipe while trying to force out this stuff. I should have just waited and allowed gravity to let the, the parts slide off by themselves, but I just didn't want to spend much time heating them up. Okay, so we have our heat pipes. Heat pipes are working. Let's go on to the next step, which is to install them or glue them to 
our original Lenovo heatsink and see if we can attain that double heatsink um, cooling.